trying to sell your mom on that. Jumbo, everyone, and welcome to Kilimanjaro Safaris. In order to keep your wait time to a minute, we ask that you please keep your group together, keep up with the party in front of you, and fill in all the available space. It is not necessary to form a single file line. If you are traveling with a stroller, please have children and valuables unloaded before you reach our stroller parking area. If you are traveling with someone in a scooter or wheelchair, Please have this person lead your party through the line. Zone 2 is immediately behind it. As you move up into Zone 2, please note the four circles that could be in each row of the zone. Each row can comfortably seat four adults. Maybe we'll have time to boogie over to uh, the after this. We'll see, okay? Take you in your Harambe. Twenty! That means let's go! So, John Bell, everyone, my name is Paulina. I'll be your safari driver for today. Uh, before we get out there, we do have to talk about a little bit of safety. So, please be sure you're staying seated at all times, keeping your arms, hands, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. The only time you'll stand is to get off this truck at the end of the ride. Now, if you have any children, they are free to sit in laps. I actually encourage it. That way they can see from both sides. Just make sure they're following those same rules, staying seated in one spot, not sliding around the truck, or being lifted up into the air. This is not the Lion King. If you have any loose items of value, such as phones, cameras, hats, and sunglasses, keep a nice tight grip on them. It does get really, really bumpy out here. So if we drop anything, we cannot stop to get it. You have to get it back at the end of the day. And with these animals, it will not come back in one piece. I can guarantee that. Now, if you look at the top of this truck, you'll start to see some animals up there. That is an animal spotting guide. Those are all the animals that we may see today. So keep an eye out. I already start to see a couple in the forest. See, in the forest, animals are very shy and great at camouflage. I'm seeing a saddle built stork on the water's edge on our left over here. Now, the saddle build stork has a wingspan of about nine feet wide, which is about the same width as the canopy of this truck. And out there on the right, we can also see an okapi coming out. The okapi kind of looks like a zebra with those stripes, but it is not related at all. Instead, it is closely related to the giraffe. They have the same long prehensile tongue that giraffes have to grasp that leaves. And they also share a common ancestor. Seeing some more striped animals up ahead. These guys are the bongo. They're going to be on our right side. Bongo are also known as ghosts of the forest because they are so rare to be seen. Looks like we can see a black rhino from here as well. The rhino is going to be on our left side, right against the wall. The black rhino can get about 3,000 pounds, and at the end of its nose, there is actually a beautiful horn, which is made out of the same material as our own fingernails. Seeing one more striped animal that is a greater kudu. See, a lot of animals in the forest tend to have stripes because it mimics the same way light and shadow shine through trees. So when predators look at them, they just think it's a bunch of trees instead of their prey. Some more over here. 
a herd of hippos is called a bloat. And over there we can see some of that bloat on our left side, just behind that island. <laughs> and right next to that bloat, we can also see some pinkback pelicans. The pinkback pelican is one of eight species of pelican in the world. They get that name from the pink spot on their back that appears only during mating season. Like all pelicans, they have a pouch under their bill. It's called a guller, perfect for scooping fish right out of the water. It's also a great way to cool down on really hot days, just like today. They tend to move that pouch around in order to regulate their body temperature. Now, something really exciting on our left, we're going to see another hippo. But if you look closely, you can also see the baby hippo right next to mom's face. It was born a couple weeks ago out here. Uh, that baby hippo was about 85 pounds when it was born. And they do tend to nurse underwater, so that's why they are in a much shallower area than the rest of the herd. Coming up on the left, we can see some Nile crocodiles. Do me a favor and keep an eye on those guys for me as we cross this bridge. They have a very nice spotted pattern on them, and they do look a lot like dogs, but they're actually not related to dogs at all. They're actually closely related to cats, and they have a very interesting society. Typically, the females are considered more dominant than all the males, so even the highest ranking male is lower than all of the females. Right now, we're going to start to pass by some termite mounds. These termite mounds are made out of dung, clay, spit, and dirt. They're about as strong as cement, and sometimes elephants will use them as back scratchers. There's also certain types of antelope that like to stand on them in order to watch out for predators that might be around. We're going to see a couple more Ancoli cattle coming up on this side. Now those horns on them, they do look pretty heavy, but they're actually very light. If you were to look on the inside, it would look almost like a honeycomb pattern, kind of like in a hexagon shape, keeping them very nice and light. Seeing a lot of different animals up ahead. I see some spring buck, as well as little tiny antelope in the distance, as well as some zebra and some wildebeest. Now those springbok get that name because of the way they spring up into the air. 
When they jump around, we call that frocking. The word frocking translates in Afrikaans to showing off. So it's like they're showing off these little jumps to each other. And as for those zebras, I do think we can spot the baby zebra from here. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the rest. They do grow up quite fast. And if you ever wanted to know if a zebra is black with white stripes or white with black stripes, you can actually tell by the color of their nose. So you can see on these guys, they have a black nose. That means that they are black with white stripes. And up ahead, we're going to see a lot of giraffe coming up. They're going to be on both sides of us. Now those are in fact Maasai giraffe. I can tell that because of the very squiggly pattern that they have. Oh, and over here we're seeing some uh, humans. Now this is the male. He actually does this really funny thing. They tend to stick their heads in bushes and shake their heads around. That way they can grab some leaves just like that guy. And it'll, uh, it'll attract the females. They tend to nibble those leaves right off their horns and hopefully they can find a mate that way. Over here on the left we can see one of the baby giraffe as well. When he was born, he was about 180 pounds, and he was born on June 10th, so only a couple months ago. A herd of giraffe, when they're all standing still like this, is called a tower. But if they were all migrating on a very big journey, then they're called a journey. You see one more on our right side, coming up this way. Now up ahead, I do see some broken down trees. That is a good sign that we may get to see some elephants. Let's keep our fingers crossed and our eyes peeled. Not too much luck on this side. But I know that the migration pattern for those elements likes to come up this way. So hopefully if we follow that path, we can maybe see the rest of the herd wherever they are. Elements do have to migrate in order to eat all the food they need. They spend about 12 to 18 hours a day just eating. That is a lot of food. Now you can imagine how bad that could get for us back in the village when we noticed that elephants were eating the farmer's crops. So we had to think of a way to keep those elephants safely away. We soon found out that elephants do not like bees. They tend to sting their delicate skin, so they'll remember where beehives are and they try to stay away. That way they don't get stung. So, with that knowledge, we made a little invention called a beehive fence. It's kind of have to be a scarecrow for elephants, keeping them safely away. So now the farmers have nice, beautiful friends. Those elephants found favorite places to eat away from humans. And as an added bonus, the farmers now had honey to sell. So it was quite the win-win-win situation. I think we're on the right track. I do see some tough marks in that red clay on the right. Elephants tend to dig up that red clay and then they eat it. They do that to get any minerals that they didn't receive through their normal diet. Just like these guys on the left over here. It's not the best place to stop and watch them, so just keep an eye out as we go around this hill. They actually might get to see a little bit of dirt on their back. Elephants tend to throw dirt up there using their long trunk. And the reason they do that is to use it as a natural sunscreen. It creates a nice little barrier between their skin and that harsh sun, allowing them to protect their skin. saw a smaller elephant with them. That does lead me to believe that that was the female herd. The females tend to stick together in order to raise the young. The males have their own herds as well, but they tend to come and go as they please and do their own thing for a bit. Now out here we're also passing by a couple more of those baobab trees. The baobab tree is also known as the tree of life, kind of like the one you saw walking into the parks earlier today. Uh, gets that nickname because of all the water that's stored inside that tree. You might actually see a lot of damage on the outside of them. That's from all the animals that like to burrow inside and try to get the water that's trapped in there. Who 
on our left, these are the greater flamingo, one of the largest of their species, as well as the lightest pink. They get that pink color from all of the brine shrimp they eat. You might see some of them sticking their heads in the water to catch those shrimp. that are walking around over here on our left. There's also another one laying down right now. Now cheetahs are natural sprinters. They can go about zero to 60 miles an hour within three seconds, but they only go about a hundred yards before they get tired. That is a lot of energy for them to run that fast. On average, it takes a cheetah about 30 minutes to catch their breath after they're done running. So they'd rather conserve that energy than waste it. the male lion. You can see that really fluffy mane on him. It looks pretty light, but it's actually about 25 pounds. It's more of a thick protective armor. Oh, and we can start to see some of the females up there. Now, the females are the hunters of the group. The male will usually stay at home with the cubs to protect them, so it's up to the females to get, get gather all of their food. And they don't have to eat a lot. They only have to eat about 20% of their body weight. Now it almost looks like they're about to roar, but they are just panting. That's how those animals let out that excess heat. But if you ever did hear a lion roar, it's a very interesting uh, sight to hear. You can hear their roar for about uh, five miles away. It's quite loud. Coming down on the right, I do see a bontabuck. Now the word bontabuck translates in Afrikaans to colorful buck. It gets that name because of the way its coat shines purple in certain lighting. Now that's the one with the horns, but right behind it we can also see some water buck. They get that name because of the way they love to stay by water. They'll actually stay by water for their entire lives. And out there we can also see some ostrich eggs on the ground right there. Those eggs are massive. They weigh about three pounds each. I could actually stand on one of those eggs and it would not crack. They are that strong. Just one ostrich egg holds about the same amount as three dozen chicken eggs inside it. So it's a very large egg for a very large bird. Look 
like we're slowly coming back to civilization. I see the warden's post up ahead. And it looks like the warden might have a couple of his goats out for us to see. Let's see if we can find any. Looks like the warden put away the goats, but we can also see one of those beehive fences, like I mentioned earlier. It's that yellow fence in the middle next to that yellow barrel. Now, again, is one of the fences that we use to protect elephants and keep them safely away in a very humane way. all of those wonderful animals. I know I did. Us users, we do our best to protect these animals. And there's a lot that you can do to help out as well. Animal Kingdom actually has a ton of different conservation efforts all around the parks. My favorite one is the conservation uh, fund that Disney has. That money goes to protecting 60 specific endangered animals. You can donate at the parks. There's a lot of different ways, actually. If you'd like, you can just go up to the front and donate any amount you'd like. If you donate a dollar, you get a cute little button that says that you're an animal hero. There's also ways of uh, buying certain items in the gift shop, and we'll donate that money ourselves. So you can buy things like the Lion One in Africa or the Snow Leopard Vodka in Asia. There's even some t-shirts that you can buy. If you buy those items, we will match every single penny that you spend on it and donate it ourselves. That way you get something out of it as well. Now, as we approach the docks, I do want to say a Sante Sama. That does mean thank you in Swahili. Please be sure to grab all your belongings. That includes your phones, cameras, keys, hats, sunglasses, wallets, backpacks, children, etc., etc. It is a long way back to Harambe Village from the middle of wild Africa. Especially if you're heading over to Mount Everest, that is an even longer walk. So we want to make sure we have everything with us before we head off. Now here in Harambe, we do not like to say goodbye. Instead, we say Kwaharini. Kwaharini means to go well. So my friends, go well, go wild, and go have a great rest of your day, wherever your adventures may take you. And stay hydrated. It is the end of the day, but your body will still thank you tomorrow. Any place that sells soda and a cup, they can give you free water and free ice. So be sure to take advantage of that. The lunch is our fancy and likes, those doors are opening. Okay, okay. Well, as you head out and Wahoo everyone. Have a great